I guess it's the sacred stair next. Oh. Uh, my chair's on the verge of breaking, so if I suddenly fall, that's what happened. This ship devouring you to go inside. all by yourself. No. Tingle, I'm telling you, me. you just have to aim for the eyes. All right. Anybody got anything to say for yourselves? The winds whip violently along the cliffs below, carrying the sound of rustling trees with them. A massive door looms before you. The edges are sealed so tight not a breath of air escapes them. Religious runes sprawl the length carved deeply into pitted stone. You recognize the runes as Memento Mori, depicting the inevitability of death and the Im immortality of the soul. The door shudders and groans at your approach. Inspect the door. Joti. An elaborate etching spans the stone's width carved faintly beneath several runes. It depicts a small crowd praying to a pair of giant eels that have coiled above a large door. An Aumua, uh, I forgot how to pronounce again, priest holds a disc nearer to the door's face. A religious artifact blessed by Barath is likely necessary to open this entryway. Leave. I shall make it so. This tree, its roots digging deep into rock and bricks, hangs over the ledge of the precipice. Below, an open tomb clings to the sheer walls of the cliff. Peer over the precipice. The precipice drops hundreds of feet into the lower districts of Nekataka. Strong winds assail the cliff, whistling as they crash against its rocks. A few yards below, the ledge of an open tomb rests to them, open to them. On them? On them. This tree, its roots digging deep... Okay. Um, rope and grappling hook. You tie the grappling hook around the trunk of the tree. A couple of firm tugs convince you that it'll withstand your weight as you climb down. I will descend to the tomb's opening. Why? I don't know that I even want to go there. You grab the rope, planting your feet on the edge of the precipice, and begin your descent. Gusts of wind sway you from side to side, forcing you to tightly grip the rope. It digs into your skin with every move. Despite the effort, your group proves their excellent conditioning. Everyone manages to reach the tomb's opening without exertion. You stand on the narrow ledge of the tomb's entrance, its passage leading into darkness. Your rope dangles from the tree above. Follow the passage into the tomb. You follow the passage. The winds rage outside, yet the air of the tomb doesn't stir, stale and heavy. Steps carved from the rock descend deep into the mountain. You walk down the steps, every stride echoing through the cavernous passage. Skeletal remains poke out of niches on the walls, lining the way until the steps land into a narrow corridor. You stand before a hallway. Its columns frame dozens of tombs hollowed into the rock. Cubby holes line the walls. Skeletal remains litter every alcove and spill onto the stone slabs that tile the floor. Inspect the hallway. You carefully scan the corridor and focus on every detail. Skeletal remains, probably dislodged from their cubby holes over centuries, litter the edges of the walls. Judging by an emblem etched on the stones of the tombs, members of the same clan or group lie buried here. A faint sparkle catches your eye. Under a pile of bones collapsed inside an alcove, you discern something glittering. It seems to be within easy reach. You stand before a man. Retrieve the glittering object from the tomb. You reach inside the cubbyhole, digging into the pile of bones and stones. Your fingers touch something cold, its surface smooth as glass. You grab it, surprised at its weight, and pull it out to reveal a large ruby resting in the palm of your hand. Uh, cross the hallway and continue. You stand in a dark, narrow cavern. The path ahead twists in its descent. Continue down the twisting cavern. You continue onward, following the turns on the path with careful but sure stride. As you round a bend, a drift of cold air announces the end of the narrow passage. You, its exit appears ahead, flanked by half-interred bodies. You step out into an enormous cavern, its walls and sharp cliffs riddled with tombs leading into places unknown. I wonder if this is just going to take me to the old city, in which case I'm just going to go back. Yeah, I think that's where it took me. Oh, no, I haven't. Maybe it is. I have no idea where I am. Did I save? Quick save completed. All right. Trelloid's foot and an heavy bullet, our cap. Whoa, whoa, look. Oh. Read 
three skulls. What have we here? River Reed. Let's disarm like. this trap. Oops, didn't see what that was. Said loot. Oh, we're not alone. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to be here. A lord's foot and an heavy bullet or a cap. This skeleton stands rigid as stone and just as strong, eternally warding the crypt beyond. Inspect the skeleton. The skeleton's chest is bowed outward from pride. Its stout boned hands clutch the haft of a heavily adorned but battle-worn spear. Above the skull, an eroded engraving on the wall depicts a man standing triumphant under a great gate. That's it. What about you? Same thing? This skeleton's shoulders are squared for battle. Its fingers grip the rusted remains of a large mace. Above the skull, an eroded engraving on the wall depicts a kneeling woman raising a lantern. That could be Joti. For some reason. Alright. I'm gonna see if I can handle this battle. Right after I loot this stuff. I shall make it so. It's I'm guessing the answer is no. It tends to be no. Oh, what's in here? The sacred stair? Okay, another way out. Now here's something. So many secrets. Oh. Oh. As you like. Oh. This. How many things going on? What he got for me? Ooh, an exceptional mace. One-handed. Hmm. Who might want that? Uh, Gauntlets of Discipline. Plus two max discipline? Fine large shield. Okay. Uh, here, put that back. Take that. Let's go to Ilmer. And oh, I can equip nine traps. Okay. Where is this? What type of shield do I have? I have a medium shield so far. Shoot, he's trained in medium shields. We have an exceptional mace already. Maybe I'll give it to Ilmrin. He does need a blunt weapon to deal with these, um... Skeletons. And then I think I saw another... Uh, yeah, right here. Okay, cool. Here we go. <laughs> uh, he's gonna kill me. All right, let's give it a shot. What can I do you for? A dare. Yeah. I guess. And uh, what do you got? His armor is eight. Switch you to this weapon? No. Yeah, that's fine. 
and you a lot. And I don't think this will work very well on him. Oh, it'll work fine. Okay, and Ilmarin, go over there. Seraphin, you just rage. And Joti, do your little little over time effect. Who's beats in action, Ilmarin? Oh, we're doing the spinny thing. That's cool. Oh, this isn't Ilmarin, this is Seraphin. Get him, Seraphin. And... You can... But you already have maces. Blind that skeleton. Risen soldier. That's not very helpful. Uh, Adair. Knock. No, penetrating strike. No tea. You can just heal. And you continue to attack Seraphin. What are you doing, Aloth? Do that again. Ah, oh, we've got this. I was all worried for no reason. Oh, watch, he's gonna like die and come back three times stronger or something. Ow! Yeah! Yes, certainly. I should. Exceptional breastplate. Hmm. Exceptional breastplate. Oh, good, an exceptional shield for a dare. You take this mace. Who wants a sword? So that looks like something. As you like. Mechanics do low. Oh, good. Oats, locks a pick. Um, any. Sepulture. And. Sacred stairs. Lock pick. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop, stop. Supposed to disarm it, not walk through it. I shall make it so. Oh, oh, there's a lot of them here. One ready for reaping. One ready for reaping. Okay. Yeah. Sure. What do we got here? Trouble up ahead. Three? Oh, it's just three. If it's three, I think I can handle it. Come get me, guys. Yeah. OT, get up here. Ow. Oh, hello. Hmm. Hmm. It's not looking good, is it? <laughs> uh. Hmm. Go over here. Is this a dare? Alright. Let's switch your weapon so you can pierce armor. And you, Leloth. You'll wait, actually. You can rage. Go off to the side over here. And... Joti, go up here. Do your heal over time. This is a priest? I should kill a priest first. Looks like there's some more coming, so I'll hold back with the Elas some more. He can just do his scepter for now. And... You... Can do that. 
heal thyself, Ayla, or Adair. Holy moly. Alright. Ilmarin, get into the action. Looks like he's gonna have trouble getting in there. I don't think this is gonna go well. Maybe I should just load. Oops, I should not hit Seraphin with my own area of effect. There we go. Um, we'll do this. You can blind him. You can note you're healing yourself. Oh boy. Actually, too late. Jeez. Have I done any damage? I haven't. Okay. So I guess that patrol was just that one guy on a patrol. The groups are too tough for me. I don't have scaling set on the game. I don't have it set to scale up or scale down. So it's going to be kind of... Whoa! A learning process figure out where I can and cannot go. Did I just trigger another battle I can't win? Uh, no, I think this is okay. Mostly because they are mostly skeletons. Oops. And Eloth. Oh, here. It's beyond. It's beyond. Are you stuck? You're stuck, aren't you? All right. Just um. Just attack this skeleton then. Is there a choke point right there? Aloth, you're in everybody's way. Oh, there's more guys. They don't stop coming. They're immune. Okay. Uh. Fire would probably work well if I can get a good shot lined up. You can attack that, you can attack that. Eloth, you're like in the worst possible spot. Okay. Uh, Ilmarin. Oh. Full shift? Yeah, just what I want. Okay. Get that there, skeleton. Get that skeleton. Am I in the right mode? I am. Have you cast your spell yet? I'm taking a long time on that. It's probably getting interrupted. Oh shoot. Uh, okay, Seraphin. Leon hands a dare. A dare. Heal yourself. Oh good, she finally finished it. She probably... How long until a dare goes? Really quick, actually. So I'm gonna do this instead. I fear not. Can't get by. Oh shoot! I think I triggered a disengagement attack. It's working against me. Well, maybe it's not. Feels like it though. You can just use your scepter for now. Okay. 
Milgren is engaged by that skeleton. So we'll take care of that skeleton. All right, not looking good. Uh, Dare, you can use a potion, and you can use your second wind. Actually, I don't think you're engaged anymore. Oh, that one's down. Uh. That's it. I failed again. This time I'll go in stealth so I don't accidentally trigger that battle. Or I'll just go up this way. That works too. I shall be discreet. You ever thought about changing the color of your fur? Merkberries will stain your skin for weeks. Oh, think I were born blue, eh? Think being this pretty come natural? <laughs> well, dang, Seraphin. I never knew you were so fancy. Yeah, but mayhaps I'll be giving them Merkberries a go. Ain't never been marooned before. I swear, eventually this game will get easy, just like Pills of Eternity 1 did. <laughs> it must. Right? Right? Long incisions along the corpse's stomach and chest provide access to the organs. Yes, I like organs. Each tablet has been painstakingly engraved, recounting myths and parables in the Huana script. Is it parables or parables? I, I got no idea. An ailing Amawa priest regards your approach with curiosity. He coughs to a sleeve, stay with a spatter of silvery flecks. Come closer to the altar. Come inside. The temple welcomes all to worship. Most especially you. Why me? The priest peers knowingly at the center of your chest, lips curving an ardent smile. Hands trembling, he touches a length of chain around his neck. I ask only for no talking. Not until we pay our respects to Bereth, to Rikuhu. Let us pray. He bows his head. Cross your arms over your chest and watch. Deity of life and death, the endless devourer who encompasses all existence, hear this prayer, this voice chiming. I beseech you, Kohopa and Tangaloa, to ready this shell for sucking. Purify my soul in preparation for the coming of the next cycle. Digest all of my devotion. Swallow my sorrows, even the smallest swell, so I can be spit on the morrow. And Rikuhu, Bereth, my god and goddess both, the eels that churn in ceaseless cycle, the new and the next, and... Let's try to impress him. From the life to death to life again, blessed be an end. Nodding fervently, he accepts your ending to the invocation. He presses his hands over the center of his chest, touching the item tucked beneath his shirt. Then raising his head, he cracks a frail smile. All right. I will address your inquiries best as I can. So ask. Uh, impressive altar. What else can this temple boast? Under the temple, carved in the mountain's caverns, lies an extraordinary maze of catacombs. So I've read. Yes, I was there. It was horrible. There are the hanging sepulchres, burial place for ancient Juana chieftains. The bodies are protected by Bereth's best, roaming always, plus the ways sealed by the deity itself. 
That's great. Tell me about the writing on these tomb tomes. Liturgies. Instructions for ritual preparations. When and how. Sermons. Some histories, too. Oh. What is going on with my bitrate? Uh well, some things. There you go. His fingers trail carefully across a stone as Craig gets his skin. All of this, it's our knowledge has gleaned you through centuries of service. Now his fingers I've trail carefully across a stone behind. as Craig gets his skin. All of this, it's our knowledge has disciple. His words catch in his throat as he curves forward in a spine-racking fit, hacking until he's flush-faced, tumbling a goatskin flask to his lip. Fumbling a goatskin flask to his lips, he drinks until minnow-silver liquid dribbles over and slicks his chin. Better. He wheezes, wiping a palm over his chin. Oh, palm. The timing's getting tighter, and there is one thing before the end. Something only one touched by Bereth can do. Um, Bareth and I happen to have a history. I know you do. He tugs at a chain about his neck. My eels, my infinity coil keeps rattling, pendants resonating with your chime. The priest presses the palms of his hand to the front of his chest. He stares, scrutinizing your face. He shakes his head, disappointed. The coil resonates, but it's weak. You could unseal the way, but you'd die inside, I think. My chance would be lost then. <laughs> lost with your remains. Yeah, somehow I have a feeling I would die in there. Not just anyone can escape the hanging sepulchers. Alive. Yet I've already traversed the hanging sepulchers, and here I stand. <laughs> Truly? You? His voice hitches in a surprised breath, sending him into a coughing fit. I'd best not let this chance pass. There's a sacred text. The eulogy to Isaiah. It's been buried in the catacombs beneath the temple for centuries, next to his champions. I need it. Of course, the tombs, they only open to the dead. For those bearing Bareth's chime. Uh, why do you need a seer's a eulogy? It never was added to the tomes, but it holds the final clues for my death. It's my best chance. I prayed for decades, night to day and night again. Now, here you are, just in time. Means Bareth sent you to see to my success. Uh, I have some questions about Asir and the catacombs beneath this temple. I'll tell you what I can. And what's the story with Asir? He's no Juana, nor a death god like neither. But he was a high priest of Bareth. His hair was a Deeran, a hunter. Chasing the undead 200 years ago. Read somewhere, one tome, he sailed to the dead fire for a weapon abhorrent to Bereth. Said the blade held a power most fearful. The priest's face flushes with fervency. His voice rises in volume as he speaks until his breath catches and he doubles over into a hacking fit. His hair fought hard for it. Won the blade, but suffered grievous wounds. Bereth kept him alive till he could make it to the temple's catacombs. His champions were the ones who wrote his eulogy. Later, they were buried in the sepulchers too. And how do I enter the catacombs under the temple? You've got to go outside, on the lower walkway. Doors sealed up tight, though. Priests before me. All death godlikes could open it. Door requires a coil resonating with Bereth's chime. 
But I haven't met a death god like in my time. I'd like to know more about the Hanging Sepulchres. They're from the long forgotten time, when there was only Juana living in the mountain. They got carved in even before the temple sprung up. Before there was Nekitaka or a queen. They're well guarded, because not all of Barath's dead like the rest in their graves. I've heard enough for now. All right. But there's something you've got to know. Or I guess I've just got to say. Then say it. The priest bobs his head. From beneath his shirt, he untucks a stone-carved circle in the image of an eel. The pendant vibrates on the length of its chain, thrumming harder the closer he holds it to you. You're my best chance. Or only, maybe. Take the coil. It'll open the crypts. Bring me a Sayer's eulogy, and I'll teach you all I know of Bereth's arcana. You mentioned something about the undead in the catacombs? The dead, with their souls, they roam still. The ones who were chosen by Bereth. Not everyone's born so blessed. Sometimes, instead, you've got to die for it. What was that about preparing your soul for shucking? End of the turn. I'm nearing it. Been working hard, preparing for weeks. I wonder if... Shoot. You know, to die. But first, I've got to leave guidance for my apprentice. The next in the cycle. Chosen to lead. He sweeps a hand toward the stone tomes piled across the floor. You are dying? Been wasting away for months. Can't say it's been easy dying so soon. I thought about stopping a few times. Um, you're killing yourself. Maybe you can see. I'm no death godlike. Bereth bestowed not one in my generation with a chime, not the next, neither. A flawed messenger like me can't open the crypts. So my best chance is to die. Uh, that, that's pretty morbid. This is a temple to Berath, right? So who's Rikuhu, Kohopa, and Tangaloa? The same. Your word, Berath. Our word, Rikuhu. We worship the twin deal. The cyclic connection of the overworld and the underworld. Life and death. Life is Kohopa. And Tangaloha is death. Born starving, they devoured all living things, swelling larger each. When they'd swallowed all of existence, they tried to eat each other next. Now all things pass through their entrails. The end of one enters the mouth of the next, from the underworld to the overworld and back. Again and again. <sighs> that's... that's... disgusting. So I just realized that um, my OBS is apparently set to uh, record. For someone who talks so much, you seem to care about very little. Oh, apologies, lad. Didn't realize we'd be only ever speaking of subjects deep and meaningful. Oh, don't strain yourself on my account. Uh, whenever I stream, that may be why my bitrate is inconsistent. Hopefully it's fixed now. <laughs> 